So in another video, we considered a line of charge of length 2L, and we found the electric field at a point P above the midpoint of the line. And in the process of finding the electric field, we came across an integral from negative L to L of Ka lambda dx over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves power. And we, from symmetry, were able to rewrite that as the integral from 0 to L, and multiply it by 2, and then pull out the constants. And we ended up getting 2k lambda L divided by A times the square root of L squared plus A squared. But how do we get that? Well, let's look at that integral. This is the kind of integral that you can solve using a trigonometric substitution. So if we let x equal A tan theta, and this is something that you would learn in calculus. There's different substitutions for different types of integrals. And this one, this x squared plus a squared, x equals a tan theta is a good substitution to use. So if we let x equal a tan theta, then dx is a secant squared theta d theta. I'm just taking the derivative of tan theta to get secant squared theta. Now I can use this substitution, but then I have to change the limits on the integral. Now when x is zero, then 0 equals a tan theta, and tan theta equals 0 says, well, theta is 0. So that's not a problem. The 0 stays. But the L needs to be fixed. So when x equals L, tan theta equals L over a. That means that theta is the inverse tangent of L over a. Now I'm ready to plug into the integral. So I get something that looks like this. It looks messier, but it actually is easier to work with because if you look in the denominator, I have an a squared that I can factor out, and then I have tan squared theta plus one. But tan squared theta plus one is the same thing as secant squared theta. So if I use that, then I get something that looks like this. Now in the denominator, I'm taking the square root of a squared secant squared theta, and then cubing that. So that becomes a cubed secant cubed theta in the denominator. And then I can cancel out a secant squared, and I just have the integral of d theta over a cubed secant theta. Well, that's the same thing as the integral of cosine theta. If I pull out the a cubed and cancel it with the a squared that's already out there. And this integral is pretty easy to do. So the integral of cosine theta d theta is just sine theta and I evaluate it at the endpoint, zero, and then inverse tan of L over A. Since the sine of zero is zero, I just have the sine of the inverse tangent of L over A, with some constants out front. Now theta was the inverse tangent of L over A, so the tangent of theta is L over A. Let's draw a triangle and see what that looks like. So here's theta, and the tangent of theta is L over A, so L is the opposite side and A is the adjacent side. That means the hypotenuse is the square root of L squared plus A squared. So the sine of theta, which is really the sine of the inverse tangent, is L over the square root of L squared plus A squared. So now I can plug that in and I get the final answer. 2K lambda L divided by A times the square root of L squared plus A squared.